Thanks for being here. This is really exciting. This is the first time that we've had such an event here at campus at RIT with an exclusive conversation with the International Space Station, as Jim talked about. A lot of work goes into preparing for this wonderful 10-minute conversation. And um, Jim and I partnered on this. So this is something that we put together between the Women in Engineering program at RIT and then the Amateur Radio Club here at RIT. And we also have a staff of folks that are working hard during this week as part of our camp. And we've also invited other camps to be here. So we have RoboCamp folks. Let's hear from you. Yay. OK. Yeah, yeah. And we have little kids on campus over here. Let's hear from you all. Yay. All right. And then we have the Women in Engineering Everyday Engineering Camp program. Let's hear from all of you. All right. Great. So the format will be, we've asked, we've solicit, solicited some questions from a wide variety of people. Some of the young ladies who sent in questions are having the opportunity to ask those questions that they submitted. And uh, some of the young ladies that are asking questions are asking other questions that were submitted. So you might, if you send us a question, you might hear your question by one of these girls. So each, there's 11 students here. And um, they vary in grades five through, I think we have up to eighth grade asking the questions. And each one will ask one question. And then after you ask your question, you'll go back to the end of the line. And if we have time, you'll have a chance to ask your question number two. OK, girls? Got that? Miss Olivia is the one that's going to be directing you and, and helping you out and making sure that you're doing what you need to do. OK, and we're going to be talking to Sonny Williams is the astronaut. And any questions before we, we only have, I think, like probably one minute. How are we doing on timing? NA1SS, we hear you. NA1SS from W2RIT, over. They're right on the horizon, so they may not hear us. OK, calling. NA1SS, NA1SS from W2RIT, over. One ISS has got you loud and clear. How me? Very good. OK, good morning, uh, Sonny. Name is, this is Jim on this end. And welcome to the Women in Engineering program at RIT, over. Hey Jim, we've got you loud and clear. We're happy to be with you uh, flying above you on the ISS. OK, let's start with our first question, Sonny. Hi, my name is Haley. Do you crave things in space that you have on Earth but can't eat in space? Over. Absolutely. One of the biggest things that I like uh, on Earth that we can't really have up here is pizza. And because uh, bread has a lot of crumbs and they fly all over the place, so we don't have a lot of bread. Instead, we have tortillas or little bite-sized breads up here instead. Over. Hi, my name is Marina. How long did it take to build the ISS? Over. The ISS probably took about 10 years. The first piece went up in 1998. The first men who lived on the space station was in 2000. And right around 2010, we finished it to its uh, uh, four solar array configuration that we have now. Over. Hi my, name, hi, my name is Ellen. What is the smallest thing on Earth that you can see with the telescope from the space station? Over. Well, I'm not ex exactly sure of the smallest thing, but I was able to uh, see the Statue of Liberty. Um, I was assisted because it was nighttime or getting to be nighttime, so there was big shadows, and that helped me find it. But something around the size of the Statue of Liberty is probably the smallest thing we can identify. Over. Hi, my name is Maddie. How are hours and days different in space than on Earth? Over. About 16 times a day, a 24-hour day, so our nights and days are about 45 minutes each. However, we try to stay on Greenwich Mean Time, and so we sleep about eight hours and are awake working and eating and exercising about 16 hours of a day. We just use the lights inside to regulate the lights for day and night. Over. Hi, my name is Hannah. If the ISS is designed to be in orbit, in permanent orbit, are there adjustments that are made to maintain orbit, and how are they accomplished? Over. Absolutely. You know, we are in, still in gravity's field, though it's microgravity, so we get pulled toward the Earth. So we have thrusters on uh, some of the visiting vehicles that we have on the back of the, of the spacecraft, an ATV, which is a European vehicle, or a Russian Progress, 
All, all have thrusters, and every now and then we need to do a reboost to increase our orbit. Over. Hi, my name is Skylar. What do I need to study in school if I want to be an astronaut? Over. We have astronauts who are doctors, engineers, uh, scientists, veterinarians, pilots, so any of those fields are great, but the background to that is a little bit of science and math, and make sure uh, you study hard at school and find something that you like to do, and you'll become good at that, and then you could bring that talent to the astronaut program. Over. Hi, my name is Alice. While you're in space, do you have any peculiar content in your dreams? Over. Interesting you should ask that. Um, this is my second time in space, and I keep dreaming about my dog at home. <laughs> but when I am now on Earth, I sometimes dream about being in space, and I think you probably dream about things that you're familiar with. So we're lucky to be up here so we can dream about floating around. Over. Hi, my name is Claire. Do astronauts get haircuts while at the ISS? If so, how? Over. Some of us get haircuts up here, and if you're going to get your hair cut, you have to be careful because hair is going to get all over the place, and so you need to have the vacuum cleaner nearby so you can suck it all in. But, uh, yeah, hair up here looks a little bit different than uh, on Earth, of course. Over. Okay. okay, stand by, Sonny. We're going to switch antennas. This is W2RIT with the NA1SS. Switching to backup channel now. Okay, next question. Hi, my name is Molly. How do the astronauts know when to wake up and go to sleep? Over. Okay, okay we're going to switch back to our primary channel. Over. Okay, next question. Hi, my name is Chetta. What type of research are you doing? Over. I think I stepped on you. Can you repeat your question? Over. I should repeat your question here. Hi, my name is Chetta. What type of research are you doing? Over. Oh, we're doing a lot of research on ourselves, for example, because we've got to find out what happens to humans uh, being in space for a long period of time. We're also doing basic science, chemistry. I was actually doing uh, some combustion experiments this afternoon. Uh, we're also, of course, working with the robotic arm to get ready to capture a vehicle. We have experiments going on outside and even at night in microgravity while we're sleeping so we don't disturb them. So all sorts of experiments up here. Over. Hi, my name is Claire. Without gravity, when you exercise, do your muscles feel tired? And how does it differ from exercising on Earth? Over. Absolutely. Uh, I just got up here and I was didn't exercise for about two days and as soon as I got on the treadmill, my muscles really hurt a lot. And thinking, speaking of the treadmill, you have to be held down by bungees and so it's sort of squishing your back and making your legs uh, pull you up and that helps you to work out and increase your muscle mass. But yeah, it does hurt and it's a little bit different uh, than being on earth, but it, it need, you need to do it to uh, maintain muscle and bone density. Over. Hi, my name is Haley. Do you feel more nauseous or hungry in space than on Earth? Over. You probably feel a little bit nauseous. Uh, this is my second time up here, so I didn't feel bad this time, but the first time I definitely felt nauseous, just as your body has to get used to floating around. You know, you don't really necessarily feel hungry at first because food is not sinking down like it does in your normal body on Earth. And so you just got to keep eating so you don't lose weight up here because you could lose weight pretty easily. Over. Hi, my name is Marina. What tools do the crew members on the ISS use to gather information? Over. Well, we have a, a bunch of people on the ground in mission control in Houston and in, in Moscow, in Japan, in Europe, um, that are all helping us to make sure that we know what, uh, how the vehicle is working and to send us information. We have an IP phone so we can call home. We have a computer system so we can get information through uh, telemetry and data up here as well. So there's lots of ways to communicate with people back at home and get information. Over. Hi. Hi. My name is Ellen. What is different about boiling water when you're on the space station? Over. That's an interesting question. I'm not really sure about that. When we're, we're not in vacuum while we're inside of the space station, so I think boiling water is is relatively the same while we're in here, um, but if you were in vacuum for sure it would be different. Over. Hi, my name is Maddie. Do you stop aging when you're in space? Over. 
I hope so, but I don't know if that's really true or not. Uh, I, I don't. I think we're spending just as much time aging as you guys are, unfortunately. But uh, I wish I'd come back looking a little younger, like you guys. Over. Hi, my name is Hannah. How do you keep your food from floating away from you when you're eating? Over. I'm right now, and I'm watching these guys, my friends, eat here. And we have some food in cans, and we have some. Uh, duct tape that we put backwards on the table so you can keep the can down so it doesn't float away. Uh, most of our food also has Velcro on it so we can Velcro it to the wall. Um, when, we have, when we're drinking something we have to have a stopper so the fluid doesn't just keep coming out because it will just keep coming out and form a pretty ball. Over. Hi, my name is Skylar. How many miles do the astronauts travel each day? Over. Ooh, I should have done a little bit of math, because um, we go around the Earth 16 times a day, so maybe you guys can add that up here, or uh, multiply that up yourself, because I don't, I don't have the absolute answer right now. But uh, a whole lot, I think. I jogged the other day for just a, a little while, and I went over 9,000 miles when I was jogging. Over. Hi, my name is Alice. Why do astronauts travel to space? Over. Good question. Well, I think we're, what we're trying to do is just like the explorers of the past, trying to reach out and find uh, the, the next, try to answer the next questions that are going to come up of how to um, keep our planet uh, healthy and safe, try to understand our planet from this perspective, try to uh, force creativity by people trying to uh, understand and engineer new techniques that work up in space. It's easy on the ground to do that, but the new ideas come from new places and new things, and that's what we're doing up here. Over. I think we have time for one more question, Sonny. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Claire. What do you do for fun when you are not doing work on the, I mean, not doing space station work? Over. Wonderful window called the cupola, so we take a lot of pictures of our planet and also of uh, the atmosphere. We were taking pictures of the southern lights just the other day, as a matter of fact. We also have computers, so we listen to music. We watch movies, and we have some TV shows up here, not real time, and hopefully we'll watch the Olympics coming up. Over. Okay, Sonny, we're about to lose signal. I have one quick question. What did it feel like to break the world record for women in space? Over. Happenstance, and I think I just broke a record waiting for somebody else, one of you guys down there, to break my record. So I hope one of you guys will follow in my footsteps and be up here and be going maybe to the moon or over to Mars. Over. Okay, thank you very much for the women in engineering at RIT. We'll catch you when you're back on the ground, Sonny. Thank you. Wow, wasn't that exciting? That was awesome. Let's hear a round of applause to all the tech people that made this happen. Awesome. Let's hear it for these girls. They did a great job. Nice job, ladies. Go find a seat, okay? Go find a seat.